Salvete. Let's start our lesson today reciting our first conjugation motto, Laudo, in the present system. And remember, the present system has three tenses, present, imperfect, and future. Now, if you need to look, those can be found on page 44 in your grammar book, the conjugations and how you would translate them. Okay, so let's say them together. It's really good to connect our, our vocal with our mind and with our sight all together at one time, just getting it into us to help us memorize it. Okay? Laudo, laudas, laudat. Laudamus, laudatus, laudant. Laudabam, laudabas, laudabat. Laudabamus, laudabatus, laudabant. Laudabo, laudabis, laudabit. Laudabimus, laudabitus, laudabunt. Optime. Okay, so last time we did questions and hopefully that, that made a lot of sense to you. That's in lesson nine. We learned how to form questions with interrogative pronouns and adverbs like quis, cur, quid, and ubi. And then we also learned how to form questions by taking the verb from the end of the sentence, putting it first, and putting an ne on the end of the verb. Okay, so um, today we are going to just look at a couple before we move on to a second conjugation. Let's just always review sentence translation. Okay, so I'm going to go to the last exercise you did, exercise 132. So if you would turn in your book to exercise 132, okay, and we'll just pick some random sentence. I kind of like doing that. Okay, let's just say nine. Okay, let me see what nine is. Okay. Here we go. Let me find a good marker. That's always a challenge for me. <clears throat> okay. Nine. Superatne. Superatne. Let's see. Exercitus. Ex. I mean, um, this is a hard word to spell. Exercitus. I bet it's Romanos. <clears throat> and then Gallos. Question mark. Okay, there we go. All right, so no, no compound sentence. I don't have to worry about that. No prepositional phrases, don't have to worry about that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find the verb. Okay, so I can see right here, superat. Okay, that nay doesn't really do anything in the translation except make it a question. Okay, so when I'm looking at this verb, I can kind of hide that in my mind. And I can tell myself, ooh, supero. Okay, that's third person, singular, present tense. Okay, so I know he, she, it is overcoming. Okay, so now I'm gonna look for a subject. So I look at these endings, exercitas, romanas, and galos. Ah, oh, right away, os. I know os is direct object ending. That's my direct object. So is this my subject or that, okay? Well, this is definitely in the nominative case, so I'm going to make that my subject. And of course, Romanus is my adjective. Is it modifying exercitas or is it modifying galos? And this one's kind of easy because they look the same. So that's an easy one to tell which one it's modifying. Okay, bam. So now I have to make it a question. Okay, so I'm going to, because it's present tense, I'm going to start with an is. Is my subject, the Roman army, overcoming the Gauls? Okay, that wasn't too bad. Okay, let's pick another number, just random. Uh, wish you were here and I could ask you, but I'll go with 16 this time. Okay, 16. Okay, this one has a prepositional phrase, so that'll be nice. Let me start it right here. Okay, Pecherantne. Semper, Golly, Impetum. Ooh, those two words always go together. Fece, Lent, and Impetum. Okay. In Agmena, Aromenorum. Okay, so here we go looking at this one. Okay, so I have a prepositional phrase. I see my preposition. So that is what I'm going to do first. 
in Agmana. That's my OP object. And then Orum. I know Orum. Genitive plural. Okay, Orum. Okay, so I keep my genitives in my prepositional phrases. Okay, that's what I do. It just makes it a whole lot easier. In Agmana Romanorum. Okay, so nothing else. I'm gonna underline my verb. I'm going to parse it because I think that really helps me really learn my verbs. But actually on this one, we haven't learned the perfect tense yet. And this is actually the perfect tense in Latin. So I can tell myself though with the NT, I know it's third person plural. Okay, so I'll do that. So I know I'm looking for a plural subject if there is one. So I have these, this is an adverb, you know, so we're not gonna, that doesn't change its forms. Here's an I and an um. Okay, well, golly, that's a nominative plural, so I'm gonna make that my subject, and the tomb, direct object. Okay, so when we learned this word, ficherant, we know it was, they made, okay? So to make that a question, we don't say, made they, okay? We'll have to add a did, okay? Did, now I gotta go to my subjects, did the gulls, make, okay, maybe we want to say, did the gulls always make my direct object in attack, now I'm going to do my prepositional phrase, upon the column of the Romans, okay, and I said upon, or I could do against, because this in is taking the accusative case, Agmana is, um, Oh, actually, I should make that columns because that is nominative, I mean, accusative, plural. It is taking the accusative case here, so upon the columns of the Romans, okay? Anyway, so there you go. All right, you ready to start our new lesson, which is lesson 10? Okay, so lesson 10 is about the second conjugation. Now, let's just review the first conjugation. Okay, so our model verb is laudo. So let's look at the four principal parts of laudo. Okay, and we're going to compare those. Laudo, laudare, laudavi, laudatus. Okay, now remember, last time we said the way we know what conjugation a word belongs to is by the second principal part. Okay, we go to the second principal part and we look at those last three letters. In the first conjugation, it's A-R-E. Okay, so we know this word is first conjugation because the second principal part ends in A-R-E with a macron. Now we also know that the stem vowel is an A. So therefore we got laudo, laudos, Laudat, always an A. Laudabam, that A. Well, look at our second conjugation model. It's moneo, okay? Monere, monui, and monitus. Okay, this word means to warn or advise, okay? So this is where we get the word admonition. Okay, an admonition is a warning. Um, so to know that we have a second conjugation verb, we go to the second principal part, look at those last three letters, and all second conjugation verbs end in E-R-E -E with a macron, okay? And the stem vowel, I bet you can guess what it's going to be, okay, is an E. So in all the places that there was an A as the stem vowel for first conjugation, there's going to be an E for the stem vowel of the second conjugation. This is a little bit different. You see there's not laudao, but there is moneo because that is a really strong vowel. So it stayed in the first person singular. It didn't get sucked into that strong O. Moneo, monere, monui, monitus. Okay, now I wanna show you how this grammar book works a second, because it can be really confusing. Okay, so remember on page 44, we had our first conjugation, 
present, imperfect, and future. Okay, hopefully your grammar book is open too. Okay, then if you have it open like this, you're going to see page 45. The next column is Moneo in the present, imperfect, and future. That's the second conjugation. You could write above it second conjugation. Then the next column is third conjugation and the next column is fourth conjugation. Okay, so you might write second, third, fourth conjugation if you wanna pause the video. But the translation is only given for the first conjugation. But it, the, it's the same translation with a different word meaning for each of those conjugations. So instead of I praise, you're gonna get I warn. I was warning. I will warn. Okay, so they just put the translation only with the first conjugation, and that will be consistent as you go through the verb pages. Okay, so go ahead and look. I'm not gonna write this on the board. I think it's gonna be really useful if you just go through here as we say it, and you look at it. Okay, so let's, let's recite moneo, our second conjugation verb in present, imperfect, and future. Ready? Moneo, moneo mones, monet, monemus, monetis, monet. Monet bam, monet bas, monet bat, monet bamus, monet batis, monet bant, monet bo, monet bis, monet bit, monet bimus, monet bitis, monet bunt. See, the, if you look and you compare, the only difference besides the first person singular present tense is the stem vowel E all the way down. So that's it for lesson 10. You're gonna go on, okay? You're going to, remember, always read your textbook. Don't fail to read your textbook in case, I, you know, I don't tell you something in this video, the textbook will instruct it to you. You'll look at your new vocab here. Okay, take special care on Tomeo because it only has three principal parts instead of four. So it doesn't list them. And by the way, because Mone, so Moneo, Tereo, Habeo, they have a two next to it because this is kind of a bit like Laojo where the endings are fairly regular for second. So you have ao, ere, ui, itus. Okay, so if you take tereo, tereo, terere, terui, teritus, habeo, habeo, habere, habui, habitus. Okay, but tomeo, okay, if you look at it, no fourth principal part, okay? So you might want to know why, and I just don't think we need to know that yet, okay? So I will, we'll talk about that at a later date, why some verbs only have three principal parts, okay? Or why the fourth principal part looks different on some verbs. Okay, we'll talk about that as we need to. Okay, um, this word arma amorum, okay, is kind of like, Castra castorum, if you remember. Neuter noun of the second declension, only in the plural. All right, so now you are ready to go on doing your exercises for the second conjugation, lesson 10. And then next chapter, we'll go on to pronouns. Okay, valete discipuli.